Hi, welcome back to our virtual summer school. Um, I am Mrs. Smithy and I teach second grade at Stockwell Elementary. And we are on day three. I'm going to be doing a math lesson with you today. And the materials that you're going to need are your day three worksheet um, and then also a pencil a little bit later on. <clears throat> so our code word for today is bows. So there's a spot on your worksheet to fill that in. And we are going to start with a quick refuel and we are going to do some yoga vate today. Um, and this is something that I know my second graders really love to do. It kind of gets our body moving and helps us focus and get ready for our lesson. So I'm going to show you what each position looks like and then we will do a few together today, okay? So the first position is standing in your ready position. So in our classroom, our ready position is always this, but you just need to make sure that you have some room to move, maybe stand up, and then your arms are going to be at your sides. We're gonna go from here and we're actually going to sweep our arms way up into a nice reach. And that's going to look kind of like this. Okay, and you're going to even touch the palms of your hands and your feet are gonna be planted. Okay, so you may have to focus on one spot ahead of you in the wall. And then from there, we're going to bring those hands down right in front of your chest, okay? So when we bring our arms up like this, we're gonna take a nice big inhale, and then we're gonna hold it up here, and then we're gonna exhale, we're gonna blow that air out as we bring our hands down. Okay, so I'm gonna show you what that looks like all together. We're gonna wait a minute. And you're gonna bring your hands right here. We're going to do four of those today. So go ahead and get in your ready position with me. We're going to bring our arms up and you're going to breathe in. You're going to touch your palms. And then you're going to breathe out and bring your hands down. Right, that was one. Three. Four. All right, go ahead and have a seat. And we are going to start today with our target. We have been talking about arrays and we are going to move on and really um, dive into some word problems these next few lessons. So our target is going to be, I can use addition within 20 to solve real world problems and I can represent my answer using drawings or models and equations. So we're going to be able to do that today by finding information in a problem to help you answer a question and using evidence to prove your answer. So we're going to start thinking about the question, what is a word problem? Now, I know that you should have worked with word problems in second grade and even first grade, um, and you may have called them story problems, but a word problem is just a story about a situation where a problem needs to be solved using math, and it does require a little bit more reading sometimes. So we have our word problem, and there's two very important parts of a word problem. There is information that they give us in the story, and then there is a question that we need to answer. So we're going to start by looking at this example, and I'm going to read the word problem to you, and then we're going to look for those two parts in this word problem. We're gonna look for any information that they're giving us, and then we're going to look for the question that it is we need to answer. So this word problem says, Ariana has six polka dotted bows in her hair bow collection. She adds nine sparkly bows to her collection. How many bows does she have in her collection now? So I am just going to use my green, make sure, yeah. 
and I think I'm going to find the information in this problem. Do you see any information that the word problem is telling us already to start with? Ariana has six polka dotted bows in her hair bow collection. We don't have to figure that out. That's information they're giving us. Then it tells us she adds nine sparkly bows to her collection. And then our question usually is found at the end. The question is, how many bows does she have in her collection now? So that is what we are going to have to try to solve. And this is the question. So we have information and we have a question. Now, when we're, when we're reading a word problem, it helps if you make a movie in your head. So as you're reading what's happening, you're picturing what is actually happening in this story and it will help you understand what it is that we need to do to answer that question. So once we have our word problem and we see our information, we can take our question and we can make a fill in the blank sentence that will help us answer that question. So here our question was, how many bows does she have in her collection now? We can answer that question by saying, Ariana has blank hair bows in her collection. That's what our answer is going to be telling us. So once we understand um, what the question is asking us and what we need to do, we can write an equation and we can even create a model or a picture to help us figure out that answer. So I am going to chunk my information piece by piece and I'm going to do this so that I don't get overwhelmed because sometimes by the time you end up reading the whole question, you don't know where to start. So breaking it into chunks makes it easier for us to understand. So I'm going to get my black pen and I'm going to read a sentence and then we're going to stop and see what information it has. Ariana has six polka dotted bows in her hair bow collection. We're gonna stop there. So we know she has six polka dotted bows. Now, I'm not really great at drawing hair bows and it might take a while. So I'm just going to use another symbol. I'm gonna draw a circle to represent her bows. So we know she has six. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right, she adds nine sparkly bows to her collection. I'm gonna stop there. So she had six, she adds nine more, so we're going to keep adding on. So I'm gonna add nine more. And I may just change my color so we can kind of see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and we'll just put nine down here. All right. So now I can either use my pictures to help me solve, I can add all those pictures, but I wanna also make an equation to show how we're going to represent what we did in this model. Well. We had six bows, we added nine more, so we know we're going to put them together. So we started with six, and we added nine more. So that's going to give us our answer. Question mark means we don't know that answer yet. Now, you can use a math strategy to solve this problem, or you may just be really good at solving it in your head. I know that nine is really close to 10, so if I decompose this six into five and one, then I can add my one and my nine and get 10, and then add five more and get 15. So Ariana has 15 hair bows in her collection. We used the picture and an equation to help us answer that question. Okay, we're gonna watch a Learn Zillion video now, and I want you to be thinking about this question as you're watching it. How could I make a simpler drawing without using pictures? So if you're using bigger numbers, maybe she had 46 hair bows. 46 hair bows is a lot to draw. So how could we make those pictures or our drawing simpler?
What can you do to make solving a word problem easier? For example, Mrs. Dawson has eight blue marbles and four green marbles in a bag. She puts in two more marbles. How many marbles are in the bag now? In this lesson, you will learn how to solve a word problem by drawing a bar model. Let's review what you already know about a word problem. You know that it has information in it that tells us what's going on in the problem and a question that tells us what we have to figure out the answer to. By turning the question into a fill-in-the-blank sentence, we can better understand what we're trying to figure out. Now, to understand the problem easier, you should always make a movie in your head as you're reading it to try to imagine what exactly is going on. So looking at this problem, I can look at the question and turn it into that fill-in-the-blank sentence. Mrs. Dawson has blank marbles in her bag now. So now I understand the problem and I understand the question. Now we can move on to our next step. Who were you imagining was in the problem? Mrs. Dawson. What were you imagining the problem was about? The marbles. So as I start to solve my problem, I know that it's going to be about Mrs. Dawson's marbles. So now we're going to chunk and draw our problem. Now when I think about the word chunking, I like to think about a candy bar and when I break it into chunks. This makes it easier for me to eat. Now we're going to do the same thing with a word problem. We're going to break it into chunks so it will make it easier for us to solve. Okay, now we're ready to draw our model. So let's chunk the information. I want you to say stop after each sentence so that we can go back and think about what we just read. Here we go. Mrs. Dawson has eight blue marbles and four green marbles in a bag. Stop. Let's put a slash mark there so we don't forget where we stopped. Okay, let's think about that. Eight blue marbles. Now I can go down to my picture model and put this information in the bar. I could draw eight blue marbles, but I wonder if there's a quicker way to do this. Well, I could just draw one rectangle around it and then just write the number 8 inside of it. This way I could save some time. What do we learn in the rest of the sentence? There are four green marbles. Well, I could draw four green marbles again or I could just put a rectangle about the size of four marbles and just write the number 4 on the inside. Now, let's go to our next sentence. She puts in two more marbles. Stop. Okay, so now I need to think about two more marbles. I know the number two is shorter or smaller than four or eight, so I'm going to make the rectangle shorter than the rest of them and put a number two on the inside of it. Again, I saved some time by just drawing one rectangle instead of two circles. Okay, let's keep reading. How many marbles are in the bag now? Stop. Does this question want me to figure out part of the marbles or all of the marbles? Well, I remember my fill in the blank sentence wanted me to find all of the marbles. So I'll put this bracket here that goes around the whole bar model. And I'll put a question mark there because I know that's what I'm trying to figure out. Now that the model is complete, I'm going to compute my answer. Now, a common misunderstanding that some students have when getting ready to compute their answer is not using their model to help them solve the problem. You just made this great picture to help you, so use it. Make sure you look at the model, think about it, and then use it to help you get the answer. We made this model to make it easier to understand and the question easier to figure out. Okay, so here's my model. I know I can just add the parts together to figure out the whole thing. So I know I can start with 8 and 2 because that makes a fast 10. And then I can just add 4 more and that makes 14. So I know that there are 14 marbles in the whole thing. So now let's take our answer and check it. So we're going to put our answer in the fill in the blank sentence. The answer was 14, so Mrs. Dawson has 14 marbles in her bag now. I know this makes sense because 8, 4, and 2 all together equal 14. 
In this lesson, you have learned how to solve a word problem by drawing a bar model. All right, so for this next part, you are going to need that worksheet that you have um, and your pencil, and I'm going to put each problem up on the board. So this is the first problem that we have today. And if you notice, you have some different parts for each problem, and those are all important parts that we need to make sure that we include in our answer. Sometimes you'll just see a problem that has the, the story in it, and then it's just a blank. Well, we're going to practice making sure that our answer is complete and that it has a drawing or a model or a representation, that it has an equation, and that we have a complete answer, because those are all important parts of your answer. Now, I'm going to go ahead and read the word problem once all together, and then we're going to go back and chunk, just like she did. So our problem says, it is so hot outside. Max and Skye are going to have a water balloon fight to cool off. Max fills up six balloons with water. Skye fills up 12 balloons. How many water balloons do they have for the fight? So do you see the question that they're asking us to solve in that problem? Right, how many water balloons do they have for the fight? Is this question asking about a part or is it asking about the whole. It's asking about all of the water balloons for the fight. So we are going to be finding the whole, which means it's giving us two parts. Okay, we need to add those together. So let's look at our information. It is so hot outside. Does that give us any information that we can use to solve the math problem in the story? No, it's just extra information, but it could help us create that movie in our heads as we are thinking about this, this word problem. Max and Skye are going to have a water balloon fight to cool off. Any important information in there? Nothing that can help us answer this question, so we're going to keep reading. Max fills up six balloons with water. I think it gave us some important information. It tells us that Max fills up six balloons with water. Now you can use the pictures like we did before to do your drawing, but I really challenge you to use this, what we call the bar model, because when we start doing bigger numbers in a few weeks, um, then it'll be easier for you to look at your representation, your drawing, and figure out the answer. So I'm going to use a bar model. So we know Max fills up six balloons with water, so I'm going to just draw, actually may bring that down just a bit. I'm going to draw one bar, and it said Max fills up six balloons, so we're going to write the number six. All right, let's keep reading. Sky fills up 12 balloons. All right, so we have another part, and she fills up 12 balloons. And then we have our question, how many water balloons do they have for the fight? And we're going to find the whole. So we learned that we need to add the parts together to find the whole. And I actually draw a whole nother bar up here for my whole. And you may have seen this, and it's also called a part, part, whole model or a bar model. I'll probably call them both. And that's where our whole is going to be at. So now we can use our representation to create our equation, okay? So when I create an equation from this, we know we have to add the parts together. So we have a part that's 6 and a part that's 12. So our equation would be 6 plus 12 equals, and do we know our whole yet? No. So I'm just going to put a question mark in there because we don't know what that whole is. Now we can use our equation to find our answer, okay? So what is 6 plus 12? Well, you may be a really good mathematician and can do that in your head, but I'm going to show you my thinking. I think I'm going to decompose this 12 
into 10 and 2. Okay? And then I have a 6 and 2 that I know makes 8, and then I can add my 10 and get 18. So my answer is 18. Now my answer is not just 18 because we need to have a label. So we're talking about what in this word problem? 18 balloons, right? So I'm going to label my answer 18 balloons. And if you thought of that fill in the blank sentence, it would, the question is how many water balloons do they have for the fight? They have 18 water balloons for the fight. The last thing we're going to do is check and see if our answer is reasonable. And this is something you can do in your head. We want to see if our answer makes sense. So if I know that I need to add 6 and 12, I can think, hmm, what friendly number is 6 near? Well, it's kind of close to 10. It's closer to 10 than 0. And 12 is closer to 10 than 20. So my answer should be about 10 plus 10, and that would be 20. And as long as my answer is really within 5, I think it's a pretty reasonable answer. 18 is pretty close to 20. So 18 balloons is a pretty reasonable answer. Now, if I would have gotten the answer 6, I should know something's wrong. I may have accidentally subtracted because it wouldn't make sense to have 6 balloons and then 12 balloons and then have 6 in all. So yes, my answer is reasonable. Okay, we're going to go to the next one and I'll have you do a little bit of the work for me. I'm going to go ahead and read the problem for you and I want you to pick out the question and already start thinking how you're going to represent your pictures or your models to show what's happening in the problem. Nine students arrive at the summer kickoff party for second grade. Later, seven more students join the party. How many students were there all together? Hmm. Do you see the question? How many students were there all together? So are we looking for a whole or are we looking for a part here? We're looking for the whole all together. So I already know that if I create my bar model, I'm missing this whole, okay? Did you know any parts? Go ahead and draw your representation. Now our numbers in this word problem are a little different. They're in word form. So we have nine students arrive at the summer kickoff party for second grade. So our first part is nine. Later, seven more students join the party. So the other part is seven. Now we can use our model to write an equation. Go ahead and write an equation with a question mark that would represent this model we made. If we have our parts, we need to find the whole. We would need to add 9 plus 7, and that would equal question mark. We don't know what that equals yet. What answer did you get? What is 9 plus 7? Well, I can take a 1 from that 7. Again, really like to make those 10s. If we look at 7 and 6 and 1, then I could combine my 9 and 1 and get 10. And 6 more would be 16. Did you get 16? And we need to label our answer. We're talking about 16 students. So make sure you write students next to your number. Think about this a second. Is this a reasonable answer? Yes or no? Well, we know 
9 is pretty close to 10, 7 is pretty close to 10. If our answer is almost to 20, we should be, should be reasonable. And 16 is still within 5, so I would say that 16 students, yes, is a reasonable answer. Now, if you got 2, that wouldn't be a reasonable answer. You may have subtracted instead of added. All right, last problem. I'm going to read and then I want you to create your drawing or your model, then create your equation and get your complete answer. Sarah's mom bought a pack of popsicles for her and her brother. There were four orange popsicles, nine grape popsicles, and five cherry popsicles. How many popsicles were there in all? Draw your model and your equation. Make sure your answer is complete. All right, let's chunk it, each part, and see what we have. Sarah's mom bought a pack of popsicles for her and her brother. I don't have any important information that can help me solve this problem. The question that we have to answer is, how many popsicles were there in all? So we are missing our whole. There were four orange popsicles. I'm just going to pause right there so I know there were four orange, nine great popsicles, another bar with nine, and five cherry popsicles. Could your model have more than one, more than two parts? Yeah, you can break a candy bar into as many parts as you want, so you can break big numbers into as many little parts as you need to. So in this word problem, they did that. They broke it into three parts. Five cherry popsicles is the last part. And we are missing this hole. So did you create an equation from that? If we add those parts together, four plus nine plus five equals question mark. Well, I know four and five make nine, and 9 plus 9 is a double, and that makes 18 popsicles. I hope you wrote popsicles to complete your answer. Is this reasonable? Well, 9 and 4 and 5 make about 10, and then plus about 10 more would be 20. So 18 is pretty close to 20, so this is a reasonable answer. All right, great job today. A way you could practice some word problems at home is by choosing a character and setting and then writing an addition word problem within 20. And you could even draw a picture like a scene from the movie to go with your word problem. This is Ariana from our story in her hair bows earlier. All right, I hope you guys have a good day and I will see you next time.